It's good to be in church tonight. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's all stand. Grab your hymn book. Turn over to page number 92. Page number 92. Let's sing just a little talk with Jesus. Amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about it. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me right. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Page number 173, this will be our offertory hymn tonight. Page number 173, I will never turn back. Once I wandered in darkness unsaved Till the Savior came knocking at my home and I opened the door, let him in. Now rich blessing to me he imparts. I will never turn back. He's my light every day. No, I'll never. Savior is leading the way. Of His love I will sing every day. Yes, I'll sing of His wondrous power to save. For my Savior is leading the way. To those mansions of glory above I will never turn back He's my light every day No, I'll never turn back for 
Lord, my Savior is leading the way. Verse number four. Healing body and soul by his blood. And he keeps me each moment by his power. I will walk in the light of his word. And be ready to go in the hour. I will never. Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Page number 150. Y'all help us sing the dearest friend I ever had. Page number 150. But Jesus came and made me glad, the dearest friend I ever had. He saves my soul, oh bless his name, I'll never forget the day he came, he makes me glad. friend I ever had. When Jesus comes, the way is bright, for he's the way, the truth, the light. He cheers me on when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. He saves my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. O oh, sinner, come to Jesus now, and at His dear feet just humbly bow. He'll save your soul and make you glad, the dearest friend I ever had. My soul, my soul, oh bless his name, 
I'll never forget the day He came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. Hey Amen. You cheer the, the uh, still standing choir on as they, as they sing for you tonight. Page number three.
within my heart or mind since the day that Jesus washed my sins away. And now to heaven I will go to spend the endless ages while they ever roll. Praise His name for the glorious day when you save my soul. I remember the day. I remember the day.
I was thinking while the youth was doing that song, uh, God answers prayer. <laughs> and I was looking out there and I seen <laughs> about three or four things I could just point out and say, that's an answer to prayer. Amen. That's an answer to prayer. Hey, that's an answer to prayer. Amen. Man.
Good to be in the Lord's house tonight. I'm glad that's the God I serve. Problem is, on my end, too often I fish with my problems. I'll get up and cast them out, then I want to reel them back in uh, too many times. I encourage you tonight, Lord shows up in your heart to do business with you. Give him all you got. And you can cast it all on him and let him have it. And when you get up out of your pew, when the preacher's finished and walk out the door, you don't have to reel them in on your way back out. Uh, that's the God we serve. I want to give Brother Andrew one more opportunity to preach before he uh, heads out of God's country, uh, out into the world, uh, to be devoured. Um, no, Brother Andrew's been a, been a blessing. He's leaving us week after next, just a couple of weeks, and moving to North Carolina. Uh, I guess he finished um, half of his college degree, he planned on getting, and said, I've got enough and moving on. But no, we're, we're proud of him, and I believe Brother Andrew will be a blessing to you tonight. Uh, give him your attention on purpose. Uh, let God speak to your heart. Get this on and hopefully we'll have sound. Just about when you think you got your choir right, the sound system goes out. Amen. Hallelujah for that, Brother Wesley. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. And these things are awful too. So... For those of you that aren't preachers, be thankful you don't got to wear one. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a drink of this because, one, I'm nervous and I need it. I want to thank everybody who came out yesterday, yesterday morning. Uh, if you weren't there, I'm mad at you. I'm just kidding. I promise I'm not. But uh, really, I thank everybody who's been a blessing to me over the last few years, who's Help me more than you could possibly even realize, more than you could ever know. Uh, just a blessing you've been in my life uh, when I just really didn't deserve it, uh, not one bit. But you all took me in, treated me like family. And if you ask Miss Tootsie, she said I'm one of the grandkids, so sorry, sorry Wesley, we're related. And uh, I don't know if you can't hear, can you not hear me? This thing's on. This thing's broken too, so I don't know. Like I said, sound systems are awful. So if you don't got to deal with it, there it is. Can y'all hear me now? Now I'm just trying to get this thing clipped. Well, I'm just trying to get this thing clipped, all right? I mean, this thing ain't wanting to work with me. It's broken, so I don't know who got up here and started spitting and hollering and broke the thing, but it made my life difficult, but it's all right. Anyway, back to what I was saying before Wesley distracted me. Uh, thank you for everybody who came out, and uh, really it was a blessing, and I'm thankful for each and every one of you, uh, more than words could possibly convey. Um, I really couldn't f ever find the words. There's not enough words in the English language to be able to really describe how I feel and what's on my heart towards this church and towards the people here, towards the pastor and towards the assistant pastor. There's really not enough words that I could ever possibly convey. But I'll, <laughs> if you come and ask me, I'll try. All right. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into the Bible tonight. Isaiah chapter 53 is where I'm going to be at. And then John chapter 1. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 and John chapter 1, and when you find your place, if you would, please stand as we read the Word of God. <clears throat> Do a bit of reading tonight in, verse, or in chapter 53 of Isaiah. It says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up uh, before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was, bru- he br- he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, the, and the Lord hath, set, hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's go over to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day, Lord. I pray that You'd be with us this evening, Lord. I pray that You'd use me, Lord. Calm my, calm my nerves, Father. I pray that You'd just help me to uh, preach the Gospel. I pray that You'd help me to just <clears throat> be instant in season. Help me to convey my thought, Lord. It's a simple thought, but I pray that You'd help us to grab a hold of it. And I pray that you do a work on our hearts and our minds in a special way. And Lord, I pray that if there's one here this, this evening that's not saved, God, that they know who I'm talking to, Father, that they might receive that salvation that's so sweet from Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me in the answered prayers, Father, and for everything that you've uh, provided for, for me and for the church, Lord. I thank you so much for each and every individual here this evening. I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Isaiah 53 is the prophetic chapter telling about Christ coming the first time. He's born in a manger. He's he's, uh, came to to fulfill prophecy and to, uh, as John said, behold the Lamb of God, as the preacher said this morning, that taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, And here in in Isaiah 53, we we see who he is supposed to be, and it's told years before he even gets there, gets on the scene, and and uh, uh, and uh, the the Orthodox Hebrew still holds on to this portion of scripture. Uh, But we we see that that Christ had to to deal with some things throughout his life uh, as he grew and as he he matured and as he he continued in his ministry. Uh, There were some things that he did uh, that that we will never experience or never be able to do. Uh, Jesus Christ was, was definitely, without a doubt, uh, the Savior of the entire world. We can go throughout the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation and find time and time and time again where we see pictures or, or forms of Christ throughout the Bible and, and what He did for us on Calvary. And I've got a simple thought for you this, this evening. Nothing new. Really, it's nothing new. Uh, nothing that hasn't been preached on before. Nothing that I probably haven't preached on before, but it's something that if we aren't reminded on a, on a regular basis that we need to do this, then that means that we will forget it, and oftentimes it will hinder our relationship with God. And the simple thing is just this reminder, is that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not going to change. For, it, it hasn't changed. It never will change. It's not going to change. Jesus Christ is, is without a doubt the Lord of our lives, and He ought to be the Lord of your life. If He's not the Lord of your life, then that means that there's either something missing inside of you, and that's Christ, or there's something between you and the Lord that you need to get right between you and Him. But Jesus Christ is without a doubt Lord. He is without a doubt Lord. He is Lord because of who He is. Because of who He is. It's not, it's not because of the fact that it, uh, of, of what He is. No, it's because of who He is. He is Lord of all. He is the Lord of the entire universe. He stepped out on nothing, and with the, just the mere words of His voice, He was able to create worlds. He was able to create the seas with the palm of His hands. The moon and the stars, they lean on His arms. They don't, there's nothing in this world that Christ is not in control of. It makes Him Lord of everything. Lord of all. But let me ask you this, is He Lord of all in your life? Is He Lord of all in your life? 
I'll tell you, there's often times in my life when I know that there's something between me and the Lord that I ought to get right, that I need to, that I need to go to Him and, and, and ask for forgiveness because I've done wrong or I've thought wrong or there's been something that has just been a hindrance between me and God. And if I'm not careful, then I'll allow that to grow. I'll allow it to continue to, to, to grow in my life and cause a bigger hindrance between me and the Lord before it really gets to the point where I can't even feel His presence anymore. We talked about this morning about in Sunday school about being uh, uh, tender to the to the Holy Ghost or or uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word sensitive sensitive to the Holy Spirit sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a lot of Christians today that aren't sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Revelation, I believe it's chapter three. Brother Wesley will correct me later if I'm wrong. But the the, the Bible talk, or God says that He would rather you be hot or cold rather than lukewarm. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he says. He says, I would rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm. You see, the lukewarm Christian, they, they've lost that sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. They've lost that sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. They're not being led by the Holy Ghost in what they ought to do and by the Word of God and listening to the words of God as they, as they, as they pierce their heart and as they read His Word. You oftentimes find that a lukewarm Christian's Bible reading is probably non-existent. It's probably non-existent. I'll tell you, when I was, uh, uh, let's just be honest, when I was lukewarm, I did not read it. Except for when I was at church, right? Everybody wants, everybody will will pull their Bible off the shelf and open it up whenever we're at church and whenever the preacher gets up and he reads from the text and we, we open up our Bibles and we'll read along with him. But really, it doesn't have any substance or any meaning to our hearts and to our lives. And it has no effect on us because of the fact that we don't care about what it says. Something as simple as not caring. You know, there's a lot of people that, that I hear oftentimes, they'll, they'll say, well, I just don't care anymore. I'm done. I don't care anymore. That's it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what, what anybody says about me. I just don't care. But really, we ought to care every single day. We ought to care what the Lord of our life thinks about us in the life that we live, in the life that we, that we are trying to, to live for Him. I believe a lot of times we say we're living for Him, but we're not living for Him. Oftentimes we, we find ourselves in a place of, of lukewarmness and we, we, don't, we, we can't figure out why we're not getting anything from the preacher or why we're not getting anything from the Word of God or why we're not getting anything in our prayer life. It's because of the fact that we're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Because there's something wrong. The Lord is, this, Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, it'll change your perspective on some things. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, it'll change the way you think about some things. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, it'll change some of the decisions that you make. But first, He's got to be Lord. You know, I've always, had, I've always had a lot of regrets in my life because of the things that I've done, but I've never had any regrets because of the things that God's done. None. There's not one single thing in my life that God has done for me that I can say, well, I'm, I kind of regret that a little bit. No. There's not a, single, not a single moment in my life where God has come down and answered a prayer right before my very eyes or done something in my life miraculous. And I thought to myself, well, that was pretty good, but if this would have happened, it would have been better. No, I've never once thought that. I've never once had, had that. I've only ever stood in awe and amazement at my Savior, Jesus Christ, as He answers my prayer, as He's the advocate for me, between me and the Father. And He takes, takes what I have to say before, the Lord, before God and says, this is, this is what your Son has to say. And then... He goes on to answer that. There's nothing greater. There's nothing more special in my life than to see God work in my life. To see God answer prayers before my very eyes. Jesus Christ is Lord because of the fact of who He is. You know, you, you know the old saying, we praise Him for what He's done, but we worship Him for who He is. I'll tell you that, that, every, that, that contemporary group and all that other stuff has that confused. They have that confused. You don't need to, you don't need to have a, a, a worship team. We all should be worshiping Him together. You don't have to have a specific group up here to praise God. We all should be praising the Lord together. 
Why? Because He's the Lord of your life and He's the Lord of my life. If you're saved this, this evening then you, and you know without a doubt that you're saved by the grace of God, then He ought to be the Lord of your life. If he's not, then you might go down a direction that you ought not go or make a decision that you ought not make. You find in the book of Samuel that as David is, is running from Saul and Saul's trying to kill him, that every time that David made the right decision, he sought God's face. He got on his knees before a thrice holy God and tried to get something from God and, and have direction in his life that he might be able to make the right choice. But that every time, every single time, and I'm he refused to get he refused to get on his knees and and listen to the Lord and listen to, to the direction that the Lord had for his life every single time David found himself in a mess every single time without question can I say this evening that every time that I don't seek the Lord in a decision that I make or something that I do I find myself in a mess I find myself in a mess it wasn't long ago that I found myself in a mess of the decisions that I made, the things that I had done, and the regrets that I had in life was because of the fact that I had no relationship with God, and I had no direction in my life. I had no idea the things that God could do for me. But God changed all that one day. God changed all of that one day. He showed me what He could do. He showed me how He could change my life. He showed me how He could bless me and how I could have favor with God. I heard somebody say one time, don't confuse the blessings of God with the favor of God. You can still be blessed and still not be where you're supposed to be. Listen, there were times in my life where I know that I was blessed, but I didn't have the favor of God in my life because I wasn't living by the book. I wasn't living how God wanted me to live, how He told me to live. Listen, I deal a lot with the young people and they, a lot of times they, they, they want to have a relationship with God and they want to, to, to have something and to hear from God. They want to have a relationship with Him. But you know what happens? They say, I just don't understand why this happens or why my prayer's not getting answered. The issue is the fact that, plain and simple, He's not the Lord of your life. When Christ is the, Lord, is the Lord of your life, when He's a sinner, everything else falls into place. Everything else will work out. Not saying it's going to be perfect or that you're not going to have troubles and trials and tribulations, but you will be able to get through them because the Lord will help you along the way. But only if He's the Lord of your life. You ever, been, you ever been away from God and not only do you have to deal with the decisions you make and the heartache that you bring upon, upon yourself, but on top of that, if you're saved, you have to deal with the chastisement of God? There's nothing more miserable than being a saved, born-again Christian and not being right with God. Make you miserable. But Jesus Christ is Lord because of who He is. Because of who He is. Jesus Christ is Lord because of what He does. Because of what He does. What does He do? I'll leave it plain and simple. He saves sinners. Jesus Christ is Lord because of the fact that He bought you and I with a price that we cannot repay. A price that we will never be able to give back or to, that we could ever honor or, or live up to. That is the price that He paid for you and I. He's Lord because of what He does. Listen, He's, he's, the, he's the same Jesus that walked on this earth and, say, and, and healed multitudes and, did not, give, and they, did not charge a single person for what He did. He's the same Jesus that walked out on the water in front of the disciples and Peter walked out on the water towards Him. And then when Peter got his eyes off Christ, He's the same Jesus that reached down and caught Him and pulled Him out of the sea. He's the same Jesus that when John saw Him in John chapter 1 and he saw the Spirit descending upon Him like a dove, He's the same Jesus that lives and dwells within me. We serve the same exact Jesus that they served 2,000 years ago. And He ought to be the Lord of our life. But how often is He the Lord of our life? Listen, I'll tell you from my experience, I don't know what your life is like with you and the Lord. That's between you and God. But I'll just share what it's like between me and the Lord. 
And a lot of times, he's not the Lord of my life. Because I am oftentimes finding myself in, in, a, in a downward spiral doing what I want to do rather than what God wants to do. And sometimes God has to go, hey, hold on. No, go back that way. Haven't we experienced the same thing in our lives? The Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord because of what He does. He saves lost sinners. Listen, I can tell you the time, I can take you to the place when I know without a doubt that I got saved. I can, I can remember it like it's yesterday. I can let, go back and close my eyes and experience it firsthand. And I'm so thankful that the Lord was willing to die on the cross for my sins. Listen, but He didn't just die for my sins. Jesus went and He hung on that cross for your sins and my sins and bore them on Calvary that one day we might be able to spend eternity with Him. I've seen somebody say one time that Sorry, Christian conservatives, but the selling point of Christianity isn't the fact that we get to spend eternity with you. I'm not selling that. I don't know about you. But I'm trying to sell the one that you get to spend eternity with, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that, that we get to spend eternity with. Jesus Christ is the one that we ought to look forward to and to share with others, that, they, that we get to spend eternity with Him. Not that we get to spend eternity with, with each other, though that is a plus. But we get to spend eternity with Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, the Redeemer, my shield and my buckler, my fortress and my high tower, the one that saved my soul from sin, pulled me out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a solid rock. That's the Jesus, that's the Lord of my life. That's the one that I serve. I don't serve the ones that, that, that want Him to be a long-haired and a beard-looking hippie. Okay, I don't, I'm, that's not the Jesus that I serve. No, my Jesus is supreme and all-powerful, has all authority in, in the entire universe and has created everything. If you read the book of Hebrews, you find that God refers to Jesus Christ as God. Jesus Christ as God. You find in John chapter 1, as we just read, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And then you read in verse number 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Speaking of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord of the entire universe. Lord of, of everything. All powerful. Holy. Thrice holy. That is the God that we serve. But I believe oftentimes in our finite minds, in our, in our human way of thinking, that oftentimes we forget that. We forget that we serve a God that is all-powerful, that can heal the sick, that can heal those that have stage 4 lung cancer, that can heal those that have, that have, the, that have COVID-19, heal those that have the flu, people that, that, have, that, that have any disease in the entire world that you could possibly imagine, any virus that you could possibly imagine. That's the God that we serve. At least that's the God that I serve. I hope it's the same one that you do. Oftentimes, I don't believe that we really get too excited about the fact that we serve an all-powerful, all, almighty God that saved our souls from hell. The Bible says that if we're saved, that we're in His hand and no man can pluck Him out. That means that we can't get... I'm a man and I can't pluck myself out of the hand of God. You know why? Because I don't have the same power as God. You see, if God were to leave this world, if God were to just vanish away one day and take all His power with Him, everything would fall apart because it's all held together by His power. I believe that wholeheartedly, that it's all because of God. All because of Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life and mine because of who He is and what He does. But Jesus Christ ought to be Lord of our life because of what He did. What He did. We've all heard it preached. We heard it preached this morning. Great message by Brother Jack on, on the Lamb of God who went up and died on a cross for your sins and for mine. He is the Lord of our life because of what He did if you're saved. Preacher preached this morning about how everybody has a chance. You see, I was faced, has, has a choice, not a chance, but a choice. I'll get that right eventually. Everybody has a choice. 
Listen, one day I was faced with the decision on whether I was going to serve myself or serve God. And I'm thankful that, obviously because I'm standing before you today, I chose the latter. I chose that I was going to serve God rather than myself. But everybody's faced with that choice. Everybody has to come to that place in their life where they have to, they have to decide what they're going to do with God. Because one day we have to stand before Him and we have to give an account for our life. I'm not going to give an account for Brother Josh. He's not going to give an account for, for me. But I have to give an account for myself. And what I did for Him in this life. I hope and I pray that one day I get to stand before God and He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I don't hear, well, what would you do? Well, I went door knocking one Saturday, okay. Well, what about the others? I went to church on Sunday night. Well, what about Wednesday night? I witnessed to somebody what time? What about all those other people that you talked to throughout the years of your entire life? If we're not careful, we're going to forget about who should be Lord of our life. And if we, are, if we don't walk circumspectly, if we don't walk how we're supposed to, if we don't live by the book and try and do what God says, then oftentimes we'll find that other things will take the place of God in our lives, of Jesus Christ in our lives, and we'll lose our focus and we'll get our eye off the goal and we'll put our mind on heavenly things and our focus and our goal on, on, on earthly things rather than heavenly things. I only speak and preach to myself, really. I'll tell you, oftentimes that when I preach, it's at myself. Just be honest. Because I need these reminders. Because if I'm not careful, then one day I might slip up and cause my focus to get away from, from God and get down here and look around me rather than, getting, than looking up and realizing who He is, what He is, and what He did. sang the song earlier, to, earlier this evening. We sang the song this morning. I will never turn back. He's my light every day. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If we're not careful and we get our focus off of God and get our focus on things that aren't important, on things that are, that are earthly rather than heavenly, then oftentimes we'll be walking close to God. We'll have a good relationship with Him. He'll be right next to us. We'll be in the light. But as we get our focus off of what's important, we start to drift away and get back in the darkness. And we lose fellowship with God. Jesus Christ is Lord. And I want to serve Him with my every bit of my being. I know that I'm not going to be perfect at it. I know that I'm going to fail in many areas and many aspects of life. But I want to give my all and be able to hear Him say, well done. Well done. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord because of who He is, because of what He does because of what He did. If we forget those things, and we don't worship Him for who He is, we, we take a chance on our relationship, our fellowship with God being severed. If we could just get some Christians today that just had a burning desire and a passion and a want to, to have fellowship with the Father and to walk in the light and to follow after Christ with everything that's in them. What a difference we could make. What a difference we could make not just in Bullock County or Jefferson County, but in northeastern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky, all of Kentucky. Just if we could just get some Christians that just wanted to give everything they had in the service of God. Everything made Jesus Christ Lord of their life. Instead of making TV the Lord of our life, instead of making food the Lord of our life, instead of making, listen, if you're not careful, instead of making our kids the Lord of our life. If we're not careful, kids, making somebody that we think is, is famous the Lord of our life. Books, the Lord of our life. I'm not, I'm not preaching against those things, alright? 
I'm just saying if we're not careful. Because we ought to be completely consumed with Christ and make Him the Lord of our life instead of making other things the Lord of our lives. I don't know about you, but I hope and I pray that I make Him the Lord of my life every single day. Every day we have to get up. Every day we have to battle with with our flesh and we have to have that spiritual warfare with our hearts and minds and trying to do the right thing. But oftentimes our flesh pulls and yanks and wants us to do the wrong thing. And we have to fight it every single day. Things that we used to do that we might not do anymore that the flesh is just one time. Just one time. But if you do it once, you know that you're going to get back into it again. You wake up in the morning, you have to battle with these things, deal with these things every single day. And you have that spiritual warfare, but you know, oftentimes we don't think of it as a spiritual warfare. But oftentimes we just think of it as just, well, I'm just being tempted. It is a temptation, but we ought to think of it as a fight and a battle, and how we are going to win the battle is by making Christ the Lord of our life. The Bible says that he that winneth souls is wise. How are we going to win souls? How are, we going to, how are we going to grow the family of God? The only way is to make Him Lord of your life. Because if He's not Lord of your life, then maybe we get too scared to say something to know, to, that we know we, to somebody we know we should witness to. That we should give the Gospel, but because He's not Lord of our life, oftentimes we don't We don't give them the gospel. We don't tell them about Christ. We don't tell them about the good news. All because of the fact that He's not Lord of our life. Jesus Christ is Lord. He has been Lord. It doesn't matter what we think about Him. Listen, it's not just because of the fact that we may not think of Him as Lord of our life or Lord of the universe is not going to change the fact that He is Lord of the universe. He's Lord of all. Eventually, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is worthy. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is righteous. But we have to be willing. Willing to make Him Lord of our life. The dictionary defines Lord as this. It says a master, a person possessing supreme power and authority. A ruler, a governor. We have one and he's not very good. But we have another governor, another ruler, somebody that's higher than him, somebody that has a supreme law, the standard, the ultimate authority in our life. Listen, Jesus Christ is Lord. Is He Lord of your life? Is He Lord of your life? I mean, really, not not just part of the way, not just half of the way, not just a quarter of the way, Not just do you think about it. I mean, really, is He Lord of your life? To where He is everything to you. And you want to give Him to everybody, share Him with everybody. I mean, really, is He Lord of your life? If He's not, it's time to make Him Lord of your life. It's time to make Him Lord of your life. There's a world out there that's lost, dying, going to hell, and oftentimes we sit here and Don't do anything about it. All over the country, we have churches that don't do anything about it. We're content and happy with just being within the four walls with the people we have. Oftentimes you hear preachers say it's not about numbers, and it's really not. But if we don't win somebody to Christ, if we don't share the Gospel with them, how how will they ever have a chance? How will they ever have a chance? Jesus Christ ought to be Lord of our life that we, so that way we might one day, if we come across somebody just in the business we work at, at the grocery store or at the gas station, that we might be, have the courage and the determination to just give them the Gospel. That they might have a chance to get saved and go to heaven. To be with Christ. The one that loved him so loved them so much that they were willing that he was willing to die on a cross for you and me and bear all of our sins. The one who knew no sin. The one that was despised by his own people. Hated for who he was. 
This is the God that we serve. But if we're not careful and we don't make Him Lord of our life, and it'll put a hindrance between us and Him, it doesn't matter how old you are, from the youngest to the oldest, is He Lord of your life? God can use a child just as much as you can as somebody who's in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. God can use a child just as much as He can use somebody in their 30s, 20s, or 40s. But God has to be Lord of your life. Is He Lord of your life this evening? Is He everything to you? If He's not, let's make Him everything to us so we can tell somebody about Christ. Give them the Gospel. And one day they might be able to be in heaven with, with Christ our Savior for all of eternity and not have to ever know the pain and the torture of hell. When's the last time that Christ was Lord of your life? When's the last time Christ was Lord of your life? Wesley, if you come this, this evening, if you'd have heads bowed and eyes closed for just a minute. <clears throat> Wesley's going to come sing a song. And if you feel the Lord speaking to your heart, speaking to your mind, and you know that He's not Lord of your life, listen, won't you make Him Lord of your life? It doesn't matter how new of a Christian you are <coughs> or how old. We all need to have that constant reminder that Christ ought to be Lord of our life. Listen, Jesus loves you and I. Loves us. With a love that won't stop. An unfathomable love. Something we could never imagine. Oh, if we would just get a hold of that. If we would just come to the realization of how much He loves us. The Bible says that He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All everybody we were fortunate enough to let him in but who's going to tell the others that are out the door who's going to tell our family our friends our loved ones ones we claim to love but we won't even give them the gospel of Jesus Christ when all He's ever done is loved us. That doesn't mean things are going to be easy. There's going to be so many heartaches and hardships that we're going to have to come through. But if we can just reach one, just one, it would make every bit of it, all the heartache, the sorrow, the pain, it would make all of it worth it. Just to reach one. The altar is open for those of you that need to come do business with the Lord. If you'd all stand, please. Thank you for joining our worship service, and we appreciate you joining in. Each time that we come together to worship the Lord, we know that it's not possible for everyone to be here at the same time. So thank you for joining us today. If you're a child of God, you're a brother and sister of Christ, and we appreciate uh, the fellowship we have even uh, by the way of internet. If you've never trusted Christ, this would be a great day to make your uh, salvation real and your life. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
For the scripture saith, He that believeth shall not be ashamed.